Hey, 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 everybody. Welcome back to Never Alone Homestead. My name is Cammy, and welcome back to the homestead. Well, guys, today we're at a time of processing meat birds. They are 11 weeks old and got out here and kind of set up everything into a different location this time because the heat is rising here onto the east coast. So we'll be up under the, the shade tree. Joshua, my grandson, is going to be helping me today. And so you'll get to meet him. But before we get started, because actually we've got the water heating up, before we get started, I want to show you what we got set up. So here you see we have the um, hugging cones. They call them killing cones. Uh, so we've got actually two of them. This is a new one I just purchased because my birds are pretty big. Here's the other one. Now these work good for the yard birds. Um, so I'm not sure if this is going to be big enough for these birds, but we just went ahead, me and Josh just went ahead and put it up. Down here you have the buckets, which will, you know, catch the blood. It, it um, helps not to make a mess. So we've got those in place. So the birds will bleed out and then they will come over here. This is heating up right now. It will be heated up to a temperature. Now I'll have to test with these birds because they're a little bit bigger. Um, the last birds I found out loosening the feathers up is a temperature about 145, no more than 150. And so that is heating up right now at the moment. Now this is actually just a turkey cooker and it worked fine last time. Hopefully it will work good with these birds. So that is heating up. I've got this right here will help push the birds down and the spoon that worked good last time you might want a pair of gloves to protect your hands over here is the chicken plucker and we've got a ladder here to hold that electrical um, cord up off the ground because of water uh, so around here and we might move that over a little bit get it away from this water it is onto a slope that right there is where the feathers will come out and that'll help catch the feathers over here we got a table set up and it's been sterilized and clean I've got my knife sharpener so that sometimes the, the knife will get um, dull so this is where we'll be processing the birds uh, cleaning them up over here we also got the coolers ready with ice into them this worked really well I've added a um, a third cooler over here no a fourth cooler over here so we might probably might have to go get some more ice we're going to see how this does because of the heat here over here I have a sink and it's filled with cold water so they will the birds will come from here to the pot loosen the feathers up into the feather plucker which they'll put in the feather pl plucker it'll be turned on water will be sprayed in there and it takes probably about 40 seconds to a minute the feathers will come off off of the bird they'll come from there to over here to where they'll be um, cleaned out and then they'll come from over here they'll be sitting there in that cool weather for uh, water for a little little bit and uh of course over here they'll be sprayed off and they'll sit here for a little bit and then they'll go into the coolers you cannot take these birds and just put them right into your freezer because of the body heat and uh, so you know they need at least three hours to cool uh, that body heat down and then you can put them in the freezer you can actually put them in the refrigerator if you have enough room overnight so this is a good book basic basic butchering of livestock and game is put out by John Mettler and you can get this from Amazon it does show the process it's a little bit different process of processing um, chickens it's more of the old-fashioned way uh, so you can if you're interested into a book like this this is a good um, book for all livestock so the corner spoilers are right here they haven't been fed for 12 hours. The last birds that I processed, I didn't feed them for 24 hours. You want to kind of starve out their digestive tract so that it'll be, you know, when you're cleaning, it won't be um, messy and manure. So this is the first time. Oh, they've actually been going for about 12, 13, 14, about 15 hours. So 
we'll see how it goes we're going a little bit shorter time and uh, so they are ready to eat that's why they're coming like this they're they are pretty big that one black one right there is just a regular chicken since it's hotter here suddenly I have a fan on them to keep them cooler this is actually a chicken um, house fan so now we're fixing to take a bird over there and um yeah so we're gonna fix take a bird over there josh you want to get a bird okay for this part we're not going to show um the dispatching of the bird but we will try to show the other parts of the process what's going to take place we're going to place the chicken in here she'll be up she'll be upside down the head will come through here it's a very uh, fast process what i like to do is before putting them in the, the restraining cone is turn them upside down it kind of puts them in a comatose state and relaxes them and so that's what we're going to do <laughs> Okay, guys so uh, it will have a couple feathers left on to it it takes about 30 35 seconds 40 seconds to a minute to tell feathers you just take a, a dull knife and pull them out this one I didn't keep in there in the heat long enough got some feathers on it but then I see the wings are heating up so this bird has still got some feathers on it. We're not going to run it very much longer into the, the chicken feather plucker. Um, the thing of it is, is that you, they're easy to come out after that. And because they, it's definitely been scalded un enough into the scalder. I'm just trying to keep the temperature down. So we're just going to um, take and just pull these out. They come out real easy. So guys, we are still in the process of processing these chickens here. And this one's been, been completely um the inners have been taken out the head's been cut off i went ahead and cut the wings off and the feet off so now with all that gone we're going to take and weigh this bird to see how much um it is it's, i put the water down and the flies want to come we haven't had any problems flies as long as you keep your area sprayed down and everything clean well everything's good but um there is one starting to come it's because it's heated up in here and i just Kind of got these sitting here, so that's not good. Um, so this bird right here, the head's been cut off, the wing has been, tips have been cut off, the feet have been cut off, the innards are out, and so we're going to weigh this bird to see how much it weighs. Let me see, make sure I did that right. So this bird weighs eight and a half pounds. Now this bird right here is probably a little bit smaller. The feet have been cut off. The tips of the wings have been cut off. The, in, the head's been off, but the inners are not out. So, and this one bird without the innards taken out is eight and a half pounds. Guys, the uh, just we're watching my cooker. Some of them are like leaf, the feathers are on here. I just don't want to get my my um, bird too hot. So go ahead and run the, run the water on the back of that. So sometimes they do have some feathers on it. Um, in, the, in this case, right now, it does. That's why I kept saying, "Hit the bird, hit the bird." But you got to also keep the go water on the sides to wash the feathers down. So it doesn't take very long. Um, the feet are off, the uh, skin is off the feet. You just take a dull knife and uh, the feathers will come right on out. So you're not going to probably get every feather out. I just don't want to cook the meat. I'm trying to watch the temperature. Neck. 
You're not saw when you just tighten. Watch your fingers. There you go. Good job. So guys, this is the first time he's done this, and so he's learning. So what he's doing now, since we don't eat feet, um, he's just cutting around the joint, bend it a little bit, and uh, time, slow down, slow down, so you make sure you don't cut your finger. So um, he's gonna cut around the joint. Let me show you how to do this one. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna bend that, bend that like that. You take a finger and you feel that joint, feel that right there. Feel that little, see you feel that? That's where you're gonna slice that. You don't wanna cut up here because you do just like, and I've done it. But if you look at that little joint, you're gonna make a little cut. You're gonna go on the side, you go back on the, keep it kind of bent on the side. You're gonna go up under it. Use your foot, buddy. <laughs> so now you cut your. Since we don't, um, there is a couple little feathers in here. It's no big deal because they come right on out. So now what he's going to do, since we don't, you know, sometimes sometimes I'll leave the wings on. The wing tips, I'm just going to cut off. Um, just go around. Sometimes I leave them on there, but I don't. I'm not really sure why I'm cutting them off because I think what it is, I'm going to take these. Uh, chickens after they've been put in the freezer when I take them out I'm going to be canning them so that little tip I just take off I'm not sure uh, why I do that if you're solid so what you're going to do you're going to bend again it's just like the leg you're going to feel for that joint and you cut on the side keep it bent keep it bent and kind of move it like that see how easy that was okay you do the other one taking Put your finger and feel for that joint so you'll know where to cut at. Sorry, I forgot you don't have an apron on. gonna cut your finger like that. I wouldn't do it like that. You wanna make sure you keep your you have you don't have your finger in the way. Put it on the side. Watch. Side. Side. It just takes practice, that's all. So, now I want you to get the esophagus. My hair is getting in my face. The wind just changed. Reach down in there. Okay, reach down in there. Now reach for the esophagus. Remember, grab it. Reach, take your thumb and Reach up under there, build that esophagus. Still... Yeah. Get your thumb. No, 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 no. Take your thumb. And you're gonna kind of, you're gonna loop it. You see what I'm saying? You gotta loop and cut right down. Cut right down here. Cut this way this time. No, 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 no. Watch your knife. Always go this way. You gotta be careful, this knife's really sharp. You don't, it, it'll hurt when you cut your finger. So what I like to do, I like to go ahead and push right there. Get some bugs right now. They're not touching me. Maybe you're the sensitive. Sensitive. <laughs> yeah, you know, like sensitive bugs. No, I don't. I got an apron shorts and same hey, you mouth. Got on. This thing doesn't do with it. I think it's the Might not be that, it might just be, I can see a bar down there. I see none up here, that's why I try to keep the table. It wasn't, what's it doing? So 
So you're going to take this, grab that meat up, make a little cut like that. And since we don't eat tails, I'm just going to slice right there. Slice right there. Just going to cut that tail off of there. And we're going to make a little grip. Pull it right there. Pull it. Now, have fun. You can reach deep down in there, all the way back. Go up, go up, put your hand all the way. Keep pushing. Get all the way up under there. And reach, try to reach all the way to back to here. Just reach and pull. It's gonna make it harder with this meat. Cause that's why I like. To, I mean, um, this end right here. That's why I like to cut that end because it makes it easier. Like that's what you're supposed to be doing. You're supposed to be ripping it out. There you go. There you go. Good job. Good job. There you go. Good job. Don't, don't touch the glove at her. You're doing fine. There you go. You feel that um okay. There's the heart. Go ahead and finish pulling out. See guys, we have to teach the next generation how to homestead, how to process chickens. If this boy right here hit shoot a deer, ain't nothing to it. He could uh he's killed plenty of deer. He he don't mind killing a deer, but this is the first time for, for him with this. So we need to teach the next generation how to process chickens, how to grow gardens, how to can. Um because what if the, there is no food system and the only system you got is from going out there in the woods, raising your own chickens, gardening, how would they survive? We as adults need to take responsibility and teach the next generation or generation after that how to homestead, how to can, how to process chicken. And this summer, I mean this winter, me and him are going deer hunting. Okay, so take your knife. We're going to cut that fat right there, pull that out right there. Yep. Just cut that back. No, no. Oh, save some of your fat. There you go. There you go. Just take that and throw that all over. Well, we're not going to mess with that. So what I'm doing is I'm just going up in here and see if there's anything left. You did a good job. And I feel that the esophagus some reason yeah it's okay so there it is right there we just pull it out the other end no big deal once you've done this a couple times you just start getting faster and faster it just takes a little bit so now we're going to wash that bird off get this blood off watch it we'll have to wash the camera off again do you want me to do it here you do it we don't want to you know, keep everything clean. Keep everything clean. So you keep everything clean. Keep everything washed off. You keep the flies down. There's no flies out here. You might find one down here at the ground somewhere because that because this stuff has splattered to the ground, which is going back into the earth. So what he's doing now, he's just um, he's just spraying this out. I'm pulling some a little bit of feathers off of here. He's spraying it out real good. This is the cooling batch over here. So, bird calls him here, over here. And it's going to go into the cooler. Okay, I'm going to make sure I got everything good and nice. What that, what that does, that's just cooling that body temperature down. Perfect. Now put it in the sink and kind of float it up and, you know, kind of wash it, float it up and down to wash it up, make sure it kind of comes out a little bit. Comes out. Water is your friend.
keep my station real washed down, limits the flies, easy cleanup at the very end. So what we're going to do now, um, we're going to go get another chicken. So this temperature is about 145. I really like holding the feet to do this. This is right here, gets it down. They're good. There's a little metal plate at the very bottom that keeps the bird off of the bottom of the pot and um, have it too hot and then cook the birds. So, it don't take that much more time. I've been doing it by the feet, checking it by the feet. Um, doesn't take very long to start cooking a bird. You pull the feathers. All we're doing is moving this bird around and, you know, getting it to where I can see that the feet are starting to peel a little bit. Uh, feathers coming out good. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to dip this bird up and down because as I've been holding it by his feet, I don't, feathers are coming out good. So what we're going to do now, I'm just going to take this bird, whoops, take this bird, stick it up, stick it over here into the, over here, into the feather plucker. I like to spray my bird off just a little bit. Um, no big deal, but turn it on. Since I'm not doing but two birds, I find I'm not doing two birds, only one bird. I find out that the feathers are staying on pretty good. Not pretty good, but like the back part of them, because I just don't want to cook my birds. So this one's for a change, because my water was cooler, four degrees cooler. It didn't take the feathers off as fast. And I don't have to do that. I can just sit there and keep running this thing. I'm trying to run it just a little bit longer. We're straight around the side. We take the feathers washed down. We the little rubber fingers are not damaging. All they do is bounce the, the bird from one side to the other. We have our birds that's been um, de feathered. A couple little pin feathers or feathers on the end. So now what we're going to do, we're going to take it to the table. What I do is I just go ahead and finish cutting the neck off. I'm going to swing the bird around. I'm looking for the joint. We're just going to look for that joint with your thumb. Cut it on the side. Put it on the side again. Bend it. I might not get this one right. And then you're going to go up under it. And the feet come off. You're going to swing the bird back around. You're going to bend the leg, take your thumb, look for that, feel for that joint, make a little slit, cut it on the side, cut it on the other side. You're going to feel it give away a little bit, and then you're going to go up underneath it. If it doesn't come off, you just bend it, and then it comes off. So on this right here, what we're going to do, we're going to make a little slit here to, at the, up under right at the breast part up under the throat uh, right at the breast at, at the V shape we're just gonna make a little slit I'm gonna go in there I'm gonna pull feel for that esophagus I'm kind of gonna hook it and it is kind of you know, a little slippery, so we're going to hook it. I'm going to cut it. 
Um, then I'm going to come down here since we don't do tails and I don't cut the tail off. I'm not worried about having a pretty pictured bird because eventually I will be canning these, so it's no big deal to me. So since so, so we don't do tails, I'm going to flip the bird around. I'm going to, and if you do do tails, you want to save the tail, make the bird pretty. You're just going to take, you'll see a little duck, oil duck, um, little nipple here. You're going to take and cut that and just kind of scoop that out. Since this is saving me a process, I'm not worried about a pre-roast or anything like that. I'm just going to cut that tail off. I'm going to flip the bird back around. I'm going to make a, a little slit. And I'm going to poke my hand, my finger through. Now to me, if I find it really easy, just cut the, the meat, uh, the skin, cut it all down so I can get my hands in there. If you're trying to make it a pretty bird, then you won't to cut this meat up here, make a little another slit, stick your your um, legs into the, your leg into that and it kind of holds it. So what I'm gonna do is there's a lot of fat here. So I'm just gonna reach in there. See if I can feel for that esoph esophagus. I might feel it find it. And basically, it does for me. It makes it harder having um, the skin, but I'm just going to grab those innards. And now I, I feel that esophagus still didn't get cut like I wanted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab it again and cut it. And it should just slide right on out. Now, there's a, I feel the gizzard. I'm just gonna. I'm not saving the gizzard today. Uh, what I'm gonna do is I like to keep, even though this is these birds are flat out. I like to keep my table. Keep it clean. Now what I'm gonna do now. Because of the camera, I'm kind of, you know, taking a little bit longer spraying off because I'm trying to spray in a different direction. So we're just going to spray it, you know, spray up in there. You want to make sure you get all the lungs, you know, hard, out. Blood down, keep the flies down. You don't see flies flying around here because I like to keep the blood down. I'm gonna turn that over. I'm just gonna reach up in there and make sure I got everything and I didn't because the lungs, it's easier to turn it both directions up on its back and on its stomach. There's another lung. I'm gonna spray again. I got one bird in there, and this bird is going into the cooler. So the body temperature go down. Spray the tape off. up after it's all said and done. So now we're going to, we got another chicken that's been processed, uh, this, this batch. So we're going to repeat the process. It's going to go into the scalder. It's going to go into the feather plucker for about 40 seconds to a minute. Depends on the feathers. Uh, into the scalder. It's probably going to be about 40 seconds or so. You'll make sure the skin's coming off the feet. 
you're definitely going to take it out. Feather come out easy. Uh, wing feathers come out easy. Then you're definitely going to take it out. The, the bird's not going to stay in there. You can definitely move the bird around some. As the purpose is uh, that heat is to loosen those feathers. And then have about 40, uh, 40 seconds. You don't want your temperature no higher than 150. You can start cooking your bird. I like to try to keep mine around 145. That works best for me. It's that way. I'm not keeping the bird in there longer, but some people go a little bit lower, and I have. But um, then once it's scalded, it goes in the uh, feather plucker. A feather plucker from here, doing just what we showed here from here, uh, cleaning out the inners, cut the legs off, uh, cut the head off, taking the inners out, and then it goes over here. It's, it's going to cool down. And uh, this also helps to wash it. And then from here and be up here, it pulls that body temperature down. And then it's going to go into the cooler. And usually it takes about three hours, something around there, to get that body temperature down. You do not want to put, take all these birds and put them in your freezer because they're going to thaw them out. So why I'm doing this is I'm doing this by myself. It's taking me a little bit longer. Usually what happens is the time I get uh, really sad and done. I mean, some of these, a couple of these birds have been in here. And so their body temperature is down. When I get finished, then they'll be ready to go into the shrinking bags. And then they'll go, um, depends on how it goes. I might leave um, the... Uh, you know, today I might walk, put, go get some more ice, leave them on ice overnight, and then put them in the shrinking bags, which the, the, the cooker um, that takes and loosens the feathers up, uh, that will be cleaned out with fresh water, heated back up, and then I think it's good for the temperature, I believe it's about 200, and then uh, what that's going to happen is you put this chicken in there, you have a straw, or at least put a, grip, a tight grip and mash as much air out, and you're going to put a zip tie on there. And that's your freezer bag. So guys, Louie are going to go grab another. We got a chicken here. We're going to take that. Jo Joshua is going to go grab another chicken. And he's going to count how many chickens we got left. Okay, guys. We're getting her done. Thank you so much. Alrighty, so now we've got about five birds left. I do believe five or six. Joshua said we have five. Is he counting this bird over here? Not counting that bird, so this one is fixed to be processed. But there, guys, this is one of our birds right here. And uh, yeah, this is a big bird. So we're gonna weigh this bird and see how much it weighs. Heavy. Whoa. 10 and a half pounds. A little bit over actually 10 and a half pounds so guys the day is over it's been a good day it's actually went faster than the last time i processed birds the chicken feather plucker is definitely well worth it and i said that speeds up the process you can do it i did uh 20 birds in four and a half hours considering i'm doing most of it by myself i was teaching my grandson so I'm putting some, you know, away at this point in time. I got some that's going to be in the cooler. They're on ice. And uh, make sure you don't want to overload your freezer. As far as the meat, these have been cooling for probably about two or three hours now. So, uh, or longer. I'm not sure exactly what time it is. I do know the sun is going down. So it's probably about four. When it's not going down, but it's getting to that place. It's fixing to go down. So it's probably about 4.30. I think I got started near enough to probably about um, really getting good good at it probably about 9 15 9 30 even though I got up early but you know there's uh, lots of things that you know seems to have to fall into place even though the, the night before I tried to set up everything because it does take time to set up um, so yeah so if you had two or three people doing this you could probably knock it out in two and a half hours something like that I think it went like four and a half I'm showing my grandson, doing most of it myself. So guys, thank you so much for watching. This is a video on um, processing meat birds, Cornish broilers. 20 of them was processed today. So yeah, all is well. Another successful adventure. Thank you so much and God bless you and have a wonderful day.